This episode of Nuff Said is brought to you by Tweaked Audio. To get awesome headphones, go to tweakedaudio.com and use the coupon code SOUTHGATE to get 30% off, free shipping, and a lifetime warranty. Or you can get there through the link on our website, southgatemediagroup.com. The recording has started. Hello and welcome, dear listeners and viewers on the tube of you. Welcome once again to Super Connectivity. I'm your host, Charlie the Professor Esser. And with me, as always, is the Blue Eyed Bomber from the Burger Pits. Phil, fill me in, Perch. Thank you, Philip, for joining us once again on another amazing trip into all that is and all that was and all that may yet be and how it all connects back together. Even better than the Pixar theories, which never worked out, quite yeah. frankly. Let's be honest here. It was it was never going to be what they wanted it to be, uh, but something did happen this week that was very exciting and not metaphysically insignificant. Do you know what that was, Philip? Um, we talking the Loki thing. We're talking Loki. The trickster god himself, time travel shenanigans personified. And what did he say he was doing, Phil? What is the new thing? Um, Wednesdays. Yes, Wednesdays in, in, instead of Are Friday. the new Fridays. And do you understand the metaphysical, religious significance of that statement? I don't know about the religious. <laughs> what is Wednesday? Wednesday is Woden's day. Oh. The day of Odin, and he has stolen his father's seat. He says, This is my throne. Wednesday. I, Loki, son of Lofi. Maybe son of Freya? We don't know. Um, and definitely adopted son of Odin has taken the throne of Odin. And Wednesday is now Loki's seat, from which he shall rule with glorious purpose, of which he has been burdened with. <laughs> hey, I'm just glad we're getting it two days earlier than we were going to. Now it's June 9th well, instead yeah. of June 11th. Yeah. You know, people are getting antsy. You know, I heard someone say, oh, they moved it up so it wouldn't conflict with uh, Black Widow, but Black Widow's pushed to July. Yeah, July. Yeah. If I recall. Yeah, so it's like, no, they just wanted to have Loki two days early, um, and that worked out well for everyone considered, you know? Uh, <laughs> so, yeah, I'm wondering, so, did you did you happen to notice, I'm, I'm going to try to look this up now, Was how many episodes Loki's going to be? No, I actually don't know. And, um, you know, I'm sure it's going to be like six or eight again. I, I don't expect it to be more. I'm sure it will be less than they intended and um, mm, yeah. more than we deserve. You know, it's th that's what it comes down to. You know, the COVID screwed up everyone's schedule. You know, as I've said, I do think a lot of the things everyone says, oh, they changed the story because of COVID. It's like, yeah, they changed the story because of COVID, not to change the story, but just because they didn't have enough time to shoot as much as they wanted to. You know, mm -hmm. I think that's really what the story is there. Um, okay, if the Wikipedia is right, it's saying six episodes. Yeah, so six episodes, that's fine. It'll get us through till July, and then we get um, Black, Black Widow. Widow. Now, interestingly, that means that the Black Widow uh, assembled comes before the Loki assembled. Hmm. Interesting. I don't. Are we going to get an assembled on Loki, or is there... Is there more to tell on the tale of Loki? I don't know. Um, but I'm excited about it. You know, um, I still say the villainous is going to be, uh, of course, Morgan Le Fay. Um, and I, I get what everyone says about, oh, it could be the Enchantress. It could be Lady Loki. But to me, Morgan Le Fay seems like the obvious choice. Especially since no one is thinking about it. Because I do think the, we often overlook the the choices that aren't obvious, you know? Mm -hmm. And when they have someone be in it and they say, oh, you know, who could it be? 
Morgan Le Fay is pretty is pretty up there with time traveling supervillains. Mm -hmm. Like almost on par with Kang as far as time traveling supervillains go. And is a magic user, so it would explain why they have to bring in Loki. And for what it's worth, is just a interesting counterbalance to Loki without actually requiring it to be another Asgardians. You know, and that's the thing. It's like all the Asgardians arguably were in the are, are in New Asgard on some level or another. You know. Mm -hmm. You know, um, whether or not we've met Lorelai or not is debatable, but, you know, these are the things that we're, we're looking at. And so I, I, I have to think that it's much more likely that we're going to get a Morgan Le Fay in this situation than either Lady, Lady Loki or a, um, or an enchantress. But they might have moved that for Black Widow because I was, I was, if I counted on the calendar right, that week Black Widow comes out it should be like episode five, I think. So maybe they didn't want episode mm. five and Black Widow dropping on the same day. I mean, it's, it's recorded. It's, you know. I know, I know, but you know, they want those doubt, you know, they want to be and say, hey, oh, look, I'm, five million people stream this day, you know. Yeah. So I mean, yeah. Well, but for, you usually worry about that for the first episode, not the last episode. You know, by the last episode, we, we're all we're all in the zeitgeist. No one's who've had our Saturday Night Live sketches. <clears throat> Everyone, you know, Tom Hiddleston has already hosted. We've had our gags. So you know, I don't know if you know. But either way, I actually think I personally actually think that it might have more to do with the idea of. <coughs> Well, maybe they want maybe <laughs> expanding their schedule because you see, eventually they're going to have to start having shows drop on the same day, yeah, or uh, shows coming out at the same time, and they want to say, "Hey, can we have a Wednesday show?" And maybe there'll be a Friday show too. Well, well maybe they want like a clean read because that's Black Widow is going to be the first MCU movie to you know be hybrid Disney Plus and in the theater. So maybe they want some clean numbers. You know, they could say, "Okay, we have." Uh, yeah, so they of could, course, you know. So they could take a read of it and say, okay, we got how so many people, you know, came here Friday for Black Widow. Yeah, well, fair enough. I mean, that, that's a good counter argument as well, Phil. But, um, you know, I'm excited about Loki. I, you know, what am I not excited about? There's nothing on the Marvel slate that I'm not excited about. And for what it's worth, even though I, I knew early on that was going to be a, a, a train wreck, I was still hopeful for humans but every so often just around the premiere date i see the my, my little posts on facebook memories like hey remember when you said oh i'm really worried about we humans yeah yeah i remember that oh my anyway. God, but, but yeah black widows in uh july you know july 9th and then beginning of september so two months later we get chang chi Oh yeah, well that's the whole thing. That's with the that's what we got in our Marvel Sizzle Week reel. Yeah, which is actually titled "Marvel Loves the Movies," but you know, not everybody is down with reading the show notes. Apparently, so, oh, um, so we had so we had a bad year. For, you know, no Marvel movies last year, but this year, man, we're backing them up. Man, they got one, and then two months oh, later, yeah. we got another one. Because it's actually kind of interesting, but almost a little bit problematic because they're going to be dropping all this stuff that they've had on on back order for so long and then when they actually run through it like you know now we're just going back to regular schedules and like no 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 we need more marvel we we you can't just turn the spot on and then turn it off what do you mean it's like yeah but do you think yeah. people are gonna be like oh yeah we need four movies a year now if you're dropping series on disney plus every couple months yeah I think they're still going to want their four movies well, a year. I, I, think mean, gonna want, I think they're going to want a movie. Honestly, on, honestly, I think you could even get in six movies a year if you really wanted to. Um, I think if you really wanted to go to wartime production, yeah, but Disney could just take it all. I mean, you know? I mean, I, that would be fine with me. But again, it's if they can keep the quality up, that's the thing. Yeah. It's like, would they want to invest to keep the quality up? But again, it's and is there a lot of diminishing returns? It's Disney too, so they might want to make some room for Star Wars. You know, they don't want Marvel competing with Star Wars. And oh yeah, else well, exactly. Well, that and that's always the secondary question because we do have Bad Batch. Mm -hmm. I didn't, which watch is it yet, and I actually haven't gotten the chance to watch it yet. Yeah, I mean, 
I've seen good. I do want to watch it. Yeah, I've seen good reviews of it. Yeah, although apparently there is some issue that they have kind of moved away from the Kiwi origins. Oh, of yeah, that they've kind of made them. Well, you kind of kind of made those guys a little lighter skinned, haven't you? And another character who hmm. was um, voiced, I want to say, by Freddie Prince Jr. Kind of got a little light. A lot of a lot of characters got a little bit less less melanin. Hmm. In the bad match, and there's there's some controversy about it. Not a lot, not enough that we're oh, you know not, not quite pearl clutching, but like if you go into the deeper stories that are out there, you're like, oh, okay, so Disney has heard people complaining and is now looking to say, hey, who who authorized this new color print? You know, <laughs> who approved the palette for this show? Because um, that guy might be in trouble. Uh, or that woman might be in trouble. No, we won't be <laughs> sexist on that. Is but someone might be in trouble for approving a color palette on the characters that you know went a little lighter in the Pantone. So that's a story yet to be seen. But we can imagine that we may see some quick digital color sw- swatching back to what it was supposed to be um, in future episodes. But you know. Controversies are controversial, Phil. So. Yep. Yeah, that's what they do. Um, and the big thing in uh, Marvel right now is speaking of Dis- speaking of Disney and Star Wars, and now Marvel is apparently in Brazil. Disney Plus has reclassified Marvel Television. And the Marvel Fox properties uh, under a different category called Marvel Legacy. And Legacy should be familiar to all the Star Wars fans out there because when Disney bought Star Wars and they got their Bible in order, they made a simple statement that everything prior to the movies is now considered Legacy, hmm. which Contrary to popular belief, does not mean non-canonical. It means apocryphal. And that's an important distinction I think people misunderstand. So if you're a student of uh, lore, really lore in general, but any kind of canonized lore like the Bible, you have what are canonical books and apocryphal books. And interestingly enough, depending on which Bible you get, some books in the Bible are actually apocryphal in other Bibles. So the King James Version of the Bible does not have the same books as the Roman Catholic Bible. And I'm sure the Greek Orthodox Bible has some differences, and I'm sure as you go through all of the different branches, there are a bunch of different groups. And this goes back to any legalistic religious tradition where there is a lot of writing that there are books that are canonical, which means that these are books that have a statement that has been approved by the hierarchy. Then you have books that are apocryphal, which are books that may or may not be approved by the hierarchy, may have things of value in them if you are a studier of the evolution of this lore, but also may be outright blasphemous. Hmm. And there's no real differentiation because obviously there's a lot of different people making a statement as to what is what. But in the case of the Star Wars and the Marvel Apocrypha, just because something is Apocrypha doesn't mean it didn't happen. And we see that with the... Star Wars legacies where characters who were considered legacy characters are now being brought into the mainstream uh, Star Wars universe. And I think that's what we what we're what we're seeing here. It is that the Apocrypha of Marvel, which is Netflix, which is Cloak and Dagger, which is the Fox X-Men Fantastic Four. If they're going to bring these things in and they don't reintroduce them as a new idea, mm-hmm. 
this apocrypha is going to afford, inform that. And how it's going how it's going to be presented to us is going to be within the concept that we understand there is a history. And the best example of this, I think, is uh, Ed Norton's Incredible Hulk, mm-hmm. you know, where it's never going to be it's never directly referenced. It's never said to be canon per se, although parts of it seem to be canon. But they're just saying, look, understand it exists, we acknowledge it, but you can't say that something that happened in that is going to be exactly how we approach it in other versions of the story. I always thought they were the just st- like multiverse, you know, it's in the multiverse somewhere. Uh, don't go into the multiverse, because, uh, my see, to me, that's a DC cop-out. Well, I mean, again, we're It's to- like, oh, that was in, that was in the first, that was pre-crisis, this is post-crisis. It's like, no. No, it happened, it's, it's still there, it's just in the multi, I mean, again, let's wait till Doctor Strange 2 and see what, that, see what they do there. Well, I mean, and, and obviously there is a multiverse, and there will be what-if worlds. Mm-hmm. But as we approach, and here's the thing, here's the thing about any what-if world. There's actually more the same in a what-if world than is just completely tossed out in a what-if world. So, yeah, so even if you say, oh, Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. was what if Coulson lived, first off, that doesn't imagine that Coulson didn't live. It's just a what-if world. Mm -hmm. But then all the things that happened in that what-if world also existed in the regular world. So, you know, Inhumans still exist. And, uh, and... and um, Coulson still exists, and and um, uh, Melinda May still exists, and all these characters still exist, um, and how Hydra infiltrated um, Shield still exists. All these things are still reality, but maybe how they played out is a little different. So that's a possibility if you want to go into those what if worlds, and then they could restructure Agents of Shield as canonical as a canonical what if which means everyone in those universes can still come into the mcu and have much of their backstory intact you know that that's the thing and um i don't think they're going to reintroduce the inhumans for ms marvel you know i think there's going to be this idea that yeah there is this inhuman gene that there are inhumans in the universe I think they're going to keep Ms. Marvel in Inhuman. I don't think they're going to reintroduce a new royal family for this, you know? I'm just waiting. Because that's the thing. I'm just waiting for the storyline in the comics. Wait, you are you think you're an Inhuman? No, you're not. You're a mutant. Uh. No, because honestly, mutants are even more toxic than, than Inhumans. I'm sorry. Yeah. Because they're not going to be. Because that's the thing. It's like, here's here's again, what it gets like, down like, to. Like you said, are we going to reintroduce the Inhumans in the MCU? Because you know the X Men are going to show up eventually. And again, it's this idea that they're not already there. Yeah. Because that's sort of this thing. It's like you know what, Luke Cage can be constantly existing in Harlem as Luke Cage, just as we saw him at the end of the last season of Luke Cage, without any disruption to the larger Marvel Cinematic Universe. They don't go to Harlem, they don't have to see Luke Cage. Luke Cage doesn't have to come into the story in any way, per se. Oh, no. Likewise, yeah, no. with anyone else. I mean, they may bring in D'Onofrio's Kingpin, but they don't have to. Yeah, the Fantastic Four and the X-Men can be out there. I mean, that's the, that that's Marvel's big advantage, one of their big advantages over DC. It's like, I mean... Age of Ultron, we heard the story of, you know, Wanda and Pietro and that, you know, you know, the bombs that killed their fam- their parents and stuff. And then WandaVision, we got it fleshed out. We actually saw this thing happen. Well, exactly. And that's the thing is like we can go back and this is this is what I would like to say that that's the difference between a retcon and a, you know, parallel universe or or just a ignoring of history. That what a retcon is, is, and this is this is what happens in comic books because comic books are by their nature meant to be an unreliable narrator because they are the comic book stories mm-hmm. told to Marvel Comics by the heroes themselves. It's a very multi layered meta commentary, but the idea is we know you think this is what happened. Here's what really happened, and one of the best examples of this is when they brought back Sharon Carter. Mm-hmm. 
and suddenly, oh, she didn't die. She didn't burst into flames. She actually was abandoned by S.H.I.E.L.D. and was lost in, you know, behind enemy lines. And she doesn't, you know, she has she has been, she is now turned on a heel turn, which, of course, sounds familiar to people, you know. All these things happened, but we what we understood to have happened isn't what we thought happened. I mean, I was thinking about this even today. You may be right. I mean, Sharon may not be full evil. She might just be trying to build her own thing because maybe, mm-hmm. you know, maybe she knows the scrolls are coming or maybe she knows some threat is coming and she's just like, you know what? I have to build something that's going to stand because, you know, half the Avengers are dead. I got to, you know, and what are these, what are these current governments going to be doing? What's the U.S. Gonna, government going to do? They're going to throw John Walker in an alien invasion? Okay. Well, yeah, I mean, oh, and there's a lot of things. There could be deeper things. And that, of course, goes into your, greater villain theories you know if the mandarin is going to be our greater villain if they're going to recast the mandarin into that fu manchu role which it seems is what they're doing they're merging the fu manchu and the mandarin to take all of your (laughs) crazy racist stereotype uh yellow peril (laughs) things and just mush them into one character that they can give a nice redemption arc to Mm -hmm. that's what they're looking for that's what they want and that may be part of building to phase four. And I think in that, within that concept, what you might see in phase four is this idea of building out that secret organization, mm-hmm. that Ten Rings, Hydra, you know, Shield in the East, Spear in the West. Oh, sorry, Shield in the West, Spear in the East idea of this ancient order and this ancient brotherhood. And how, since the West has failed, now we're going to try and build out what the defense this world needs from what's coming next. Mm -hmm. And then, when you get to the Fantastic Four, that's going to be the big redemption of, no, see, you just need a rock guy, a stretchy guy, a fire guy, and a lady who has hyperspace uh, Mm -hmm. manipulation. Manipulations of uh, reality, and that's how you defeat the coming threat. You know, that's the other option. But I definitely think I also think that there's other aspects to it. Like I said, I do think the cheat code idea is going to be a part of it. That if you establish both the heroes and the villains as tech based, suddenly you have all the cheat codes to turn off any of them when they go rogue. Because that's always the problem with super soldiers is if they go rogue, what do you do now? Well, yeah, you well, can't so- turn off super soldier serum. Although arguably developing super soldier serum is an important first step to figuring out how to turn it off. Yeah. Well, I mean, look what the door Milaje did to Bucky. Exactly. Well, exactly. Because being a super soldier isn't all that at the end of the day. Yeah, I mean, he, well, again, he had that uh, cyborg arm. He, you know, she hit the thing, and you know, boop, there he goes. He, yeah, uh, he's lost one arm. <laughs> yeah, well, exactly, and that too. Yes, and of course, important to note: now Captain America's suit is made by Wakanda. Oh yeah, yep, yep. So if Captain America ever steps up to Wakanda, they can bloop, 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 and wings fall off. <laughs> you know, although arguably he knows that now. And maybe he's the one that's going to be proactive on that. Oh, how great would the scene with that would be if they tried to shut him down and he was like, oh, no, you think I didn't have people looking in the, you know, you think I didn't look through this thing, you know, from head to toe? No, I know. Yeah. I saw your back door. You think I didn't see what you did to Bucky? No, I I was watching. Exactly. You know, and that's when Bentley Whitman comes in because he's going to be the guy who cracks the codes because it's always, how do you introduce these characters? And that's a perfect way for the wizard to come into the story. Because I just want him to be just such an arrogant showman. Because, like arcade, but not stupid. Because um, that's the wizard to me. It's like, he doesn't, he's not even a supervillain because he wants to, like, steal stuff or conquer the world. He just wants everyone to recognize how cool he is. Look at how great I am! I am the wizard! And we all just said, yes, wizard, you're so great. You're so smart. He would, like, not commit a single crime. Like, yes, thank you. That's 
all I wanted. Why was that so hard for you people? Ah, <sighs> that's my Bentley. <laughs> anyway. Yeah, so what's going to happen with the legacies? What's going to happen with anything else? We're going to have to see. And I don't think anything is off the table. I think that's the truth of it, is I really don't think anything is off the table. I don't think Feige is going to try and rebuild the wheel. I think there's going to be times where he's going to say, you know, are we going to get the are we going to get Luke Cage back? Are we going to get Jessica Jones back? And he's going to say, you know, do we need Jessica Jones for this? Do we need Luke Cage for this? Do we need Iron Fist for this? Um, if we do need it, do we want to bring it back as a different actor? What do we want to change? And that's the thing; they've already recast both Rhodey and Bruce Banner. Exactly. So it's not like they're, you know, it's not like even if they recast Luke Cage, that it necessarily means that Netflix history is gone. Mm-mm. You know, and for what it's worth, they're eventually going to be recasting probably Chad McBo- Chadwick Boseman. So when you recast that Black Panther, they bring back T'Challa and he has a different face. Suddenly we've, we're saying, you know, we're going to bring people back, and they might have different faces. So, I mean, do you have to bring him back? Because I mean, uh, they said yeah. the, the sequel world. You know, what is it? World of Wakanda, or no, Wakanda Forever. Wakanda Forever. Yeah, it's called Wakanda Forever, and there will be a World of Wakanda series as well. Yeah, but I and mean, yeah, they're going to bring him back because he's he's too valuable of a character to leave dead. I know, but I was just well, I, I at least for a while I was gonna. I wonder if the sequel is gonna be. Is it gonna be Shuri trying to take the throne? And you know, some of these okay. maybe some of these old yeah. fashioned people being like, you know, oh, we're gonna let this woman, this girl child, take the th- our throne. You know, and it's her. You know, and what I'll tell you is, is that what you're gonna have is you're going to have an entire phase four to talk about it. And by the time we get to yeah. Wakanda Forever, you're gonna start having the hints about. What has happened to King T'Challa? Yeah. What has happened? What are we going to do? Where's King T'Challa? And then if we get a hint of T'Challa's return, not actually see who it is, but we get the hint that he is coming back, we're going to be excited for it at that point. Because the disappearance of King T'Challa may be something that is referenced in, say, something like Shang-Chi. Mm-hmm. You know, you may just see... Uh, a little blurb, an H I an H I N N uh, blurb. I think that's the name of the thing. It's like K- King T'Challa of Wakanda still 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 missing. You know, uh, unseen in forty days. You know, whatever it's going to be. You know, I just wondered if maybe for a while we would just have you know uh, Shuri as the Black Panther for a while. Because I mean, I love the character of Sh- T'Challa, but I mean, Wakanda yeah. went five years. They they survived for five years without T'Challa during the snap. well, exactly. And, you know, I mean, exa- it, it, here's the thing. It's how do you approach it? I do think that there is a strong argument to be made that recasting T'Challa eventually makes sense. I mean, that's always the thing with this whole MCU experiment is like, unlike comic books, these are not, you know, all these actors are going to continue to age. Exactly. And some are going to unfortunately pass away. And how do you approach that? Do you just keep this universe and then just you know build up our legacies? How do we keep a, how do we keep it moving forward? Um, do we eventually say we have to just trash it all and reboot? It does any of that ever actually work for the in the long run for 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 the thing? I honestly, I, I'm sure they could do an official reboot hmm. at some point, and who knows. Maybe that's what happens at the end of Phase Four. But again, is we get a reboot and then we go back to the first heroes, the Fantastic Four, the uh, first family. I don't think we have to do that for a while. But I mean, yeah. But I mean, yeah. I mean, they could always uh, recast T'Challa at any point because you know, advanced Wakanda technology. You know, his his face gets messed up and they give him a new face or something. Yeah, I mean, I mean, you don't even have to mention it. You know, honestly, that's the thing is like I think no one mentioned when Terrence Howard turned into Don Cheadle. Yeah, but that was at the, like, that was at the that's that was at the beginning too. I don't know if they you know even knew back then that you know by Iron Man two that this thing was gonna have the legs it had. No, true, but at the same time, I mean, generally speaking, if you think about any historical recasting, yeah, do they hang a lampshade on it? I mean, almost never. Yeah. Almost never do they say we recast this part. The only thing I can think of is once in Dream On they had a thing when they recast his best friend. 
Um, uh, one was Ernie Hudson. I can't remember who the other guy was, but like when he comes back, he's like, "Yeah, I just had an eye lift," and they take off the bandage. Man, no, you look completely different. It's it's like, my, it's like it's a man. I think I look different. No, you look exactly the same, just younger. And it's you know, uh, you know that's how it goes sometimes. Um, so how they deal with it, we'll see. I just thought it'd be um, interesting for a while to show, like you know, maybe their mother takes the throne again for a while, but it's like. While she's being the Black Panther, show Shuri having the train to be the next ruler of Wakanda. Because I mean, when we met T'Challa in uh, Civil War, I mean, we you know we met him for five minutes, and then boom, his father's dead, and he's the king all of a sudden. Well, you know, I guess maybe what is the real point in that story is that the heart shaped herb, the the heart shaped herb was lost, and that's actually an interesting thing because there seems to be this implication that the role of the Black Panther is not necessarily tied to the role of the king. Yeah. Because the king was the king, and maybe he was the Black Panther, but now T'Challa was the Black Panther. Yeah. You know, and that's like sort of like becoming the regent and the heir apparent. But if the heart-shaped herb has been destroyed, which this is one of the things, like, to me... The best use of this missing thing is he has to go to the realm of the dead. Yeah. And in the realm of the dead, that's where he finds the secret of the heart shaped herb. So that Shuri maybe has to be the Black Panther, but she has to be a tech based Black Panther. Oh, yeah. Because there's no heart shaped herb to power her. And she can do that because she has the technology. She can even have her whole thing, like relying on these ancient mystic arts is foolish. When I can do it all better with my mind, you know, and that becomes its own antagonism as it was, which it was in the series as well, in the comic book series. So the idea that there is no more heart-shaped herb, T'Challa has gone to find it because T'Challa wants to keep the tradition, but in order to do this, he must leave. And maybe Shuri knows, but she has to keep this a secret from everyone else. Because mm. she can't let everyone know, oh, he's gone to the realm of the dead yeah. to seek out this mystical understanding to how to bring the heart-shaped herb back. Because presumably it doesn't grow wild anymore. That it was something that was cultivated, because it was cultivated in a dark cave. Mm. Which actually suggests that it's some sort of a... a mushroom rather than an actual photosynthetic plant. Definitely bioluminesce, so there's a lot to this to this plant. Oh or I forget what they call the kingdom of, of, of mushrooms, because it's not uh uh the vegetable kingdom. It's actually its own thing, mushrooms. So Well I mean isn't it just to find in the right formula to infuse vibranium into the soil or because isn't that where those heart those heart shaped herbs came from is after that, you know, the at you know the medium. Well herb. yeah, it, but the thing is is that it was apparently cultivated after that. So, yeah, so that's the yeah. thing. It's like there's this whole process that occurs that they now have to recreate from scratch. Yeah. And it's kind of the same thing as with the super soldier serum. Yep. You had the super soldier serum, and then the person who understood it is dead. And exactly how it works isn't quite understood. It's like it was one of these things where we knew it worked, but we didn't know how it worked. And recreating a formula wouldn't be as hard as figuring out why the formula actually worked. Hmm. And that's the difficulty that everyone's trying to work through now. Is the idea, you know? So, I mean, I of course loved uh, loved um, everything he did with Captain America and the oh, yeah. Super Soldier Serum over the years. So, I'm good with that. Oh, so, do you want to talk some comics before we get out of here? Because we're already yeah. at 35 minutes. Okay, I got all Marvel books now, and I'm excited. Uh, let's get the first one out of the way: The Union. I think this is its last issue, maybe, maybe not, I don't know. Um, what is that, number five? Number five. Um, mystical Artifact, you know, one of the 700 stones that gives you nigh omnipotent powers. Uh, when I always remember kids, nigh means not. Um, mm-hmm. Darwin gets the Empire Stone. 
he starts talking big, then, you know, find out that Britannia exists as a ghost because she is the spirit of England, and she will be there in our darkest hour. And so, that gets a little, um, we're not quite sure what happens with that, but everyone gets together, snakes, bees, snakes, there's a whole, oh, they're all monsters scenes, but, you know, monsters can be heroes, so... Uh, and then our little shapeshifter character becomes the evil Corgi, um, steals it from Doc Croc and swallows it, which he eventually poops out and leaves at 10 Downing Street. Uh, and that's the end of the story. Um, I mean, it's an enjoyable romp, honestly. It, here's what I'll say. If you like, if you like, I don't want to say Doctor Who, but if you liked, um, Torchwood, it might be a lot of fun. Um, I did enjoy the Union. I always like whenever they explore superhumanity outside of New York City. I just wish you could get a more fleshed out understanding than just, hey, here's some superheroes who exist elsewhere. Yeah. Bye. <laughs> you know, it's like when um, the thing went to Paris and he met the, the Justice League. They're like ju- the, the French Justice League and they have their own supervillains and they have their own ways of doing things, sort of like when the tick went to Antwerp. Um, <laughs> you know, it's interesting and it's fun, but at the same time, it also, you know, I'd like to know more about how that universe works. But anyway, give me a book, Phil. What book did you read this week that you uh, want to tell the world about? Well, maybe we'll save the big one for last. Uh, Immortal Hulk uh, 46? Oh, Immortal Hulk? Um, no Doc Lingowski in this. <laughs> Although, and again, it's one of these weird things. It's like Lingowski, like, hey, man, I'm glad I'm not a big hairy dude no more. I know, it just runs off with Samson's body, I know. Yeah, I mean, you can argue, well, no, I had to get out of there, man. I was, you know, you guys weren't around. What do I know what's going on? Um, You know, no, Joe is cosmic ray powered, which is an interesting term. Oh, yeah, cosmic Joe just smacking the UFOs around. Yeah, uh, you know, I don't like them being mean to poor ironclad, man guy crushes his head it's just weird man it's like dude that's just dark and you know and again is he it's, a, it just makes him a sadist and that's like i don't like that i don't like that i don't like sadist talk is that is that maybe purposely a little bit because banner's not in there banner's always in there i know it's well like- well, well, they well, okay, okay. You know, they the leader yeah. took out the part that thinks it's Bruce Banner. Okay, <laughs> okay. Let me just say this: half his mind yeah. is missing. I don't even know what that means. That's the thing. It's like I don't even know what that means. I don't even know. Yeah. It's like we yeah. You know, this is where Doc Sampson would be really helpful. It's like, what are you talking about? Okay, like this is why we got the freaking ringmaster in here the last time because you were just. So effed up in your own head, you don't even know what's going on in your brain. Matt. Basically, half his psyche is missing. Yeah, and it's not even the. It's yeah, but but here's the thing: it's like you know, um, Joe was never a sadist. No, and that's the thing: it's like it's 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 an embrace of sadism that I'm not comfortable with. I don't know. During acts of vengeance, man, he broke uh, Grey Gargoyle's arms, I believe. First of all, breaking a person's arms is not the same as breaking um, their brain. Yeah, yeah. And that's really the implication here, that he's, like, crushing his brain. And, yeah, maybe he'll get better, because, obviously, people get better in these universes as needed. But um, Well, like Joe even said, he's like, are you solid metal through and through, or do you got, like, a squishy center? Yeah, it's it's not cool. And for what it's worth... He could have broken his arms and had effectively the same effect. Yeah, and it's it, it's like it's a needlessly cruel aspect of it. But again, they they, um, they seem that they uh, since issue one they love their body horror in this in this series. Yeah, and it's really the thing I hate most yeah. about it. It's like okay, I get it. You like to draw that, okay? And we get that again at the very end. Uh, and again, it's like the whole Thor just picks a fight. It's like. Who is this Thor? This doesn't... It's like it doesn't feel like Thor. Nobody feels like who they are. And again... And again Even the Hulk doesn't feel like who he is. Everyone feels off to me. And again, since since when, again, did the Avengers just, like, 
drop everything when Gyra calls anymore. Wouldn't they just be like, I mean, it is the Hulk. I mean, I guess they think he's a. a yeah, but when have they never just came in guns blazing at the Hulk either? I know. Well, Invariably, they, always, and we were like, it would have been Cap coming in and saying, "Hey, Hulk, how you been?" And he's like, "I'm Joe." It's like, "Okay, Joe, good to see you again. How have you? Uh, yeah, how are you doing, Joe?" I mean, unless they, and, heard, unless they heard what happened to the UFOs, and they were like, "You," they're like, "Why did he crush?" No, Iron they know head? who the UFOs are. No, but I'm, I'm, like, just, I'm just saying, they're, they're like, he crushed the guy's head. <laughs> and we supposed to take from this that now, like the leaders in freaking. Uh, Betty Banner's harpy body. Oh, I thought that was just Betty coming to help Hulk. But she's got the whole long head thing now. I, Again, body we know, I know, but we also know that that's like supposed to be a thing with this. It's like, oh, you know, when the leader's in you, you start doing that whole body hoarder. Yeah. I, like I said, it's it just seems lazy at this point. It's the kind of stuff that it's like at a certain point, I'm like, okay, I get you have a thing you're doing, and it starts to turn me off from the book. It's like, you know, I don't feel like this is telling a story worth telling anymore. Um, I don't think that the visual storytelling is actually helping you tell the story. I kind of feel it's falling apart. Mm -hmm. Personal opinion. Everyone's mileage varies. But, I mean, it's one thing if you have the Avengers come in one swing in. But, again, we did this towards the beginning of this series, and now the Avengers are back, you know, guns blazing again. Exactly. And it's like, you know, not for nothing, there's – like it, it's a little out of character for the Avengers. It's and a little it, out of a character. It's a little out of character for Cap, you know? Yeah, yeah. But, it, but again, and is Joe, like, power drunk or something? Because I like – I mean – I don't want Cosmic Joe. I want regular Joe. It has to be a little craftier because, you know, he is just the tiniest bit weaker than the Green Hulk. Well, yeah, but now he feels, like, strong again. That's what I'm saying. Because he's, he's got his... Yeah. 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 And, of course, I mean, it's... I like that. That's like... that, And it's like these things... There's things I like. Mm -hmm. It's kind of like, you know, there are things I like that they've integrated into the Marvel Universe cosmology. Mm-hmm. But I don't always like the way that they do it. So, like, the idea of cosmic ra gamma, cosmic radiation and gamma radiation, which, fun fact, are actually the exact same thing, uh, <laughs> uh, being, like, opposite ends of the same spectrum, mm -hmm. um, it's a fun, it's a fun comic booky idea. Mm -hmm. But the idea that, oh, you know, we're going to open it up to be this idea that, you know, it's, you know, it, 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 it's a fun idea. I don't like how it's executed. And, like, along those same lines, the idea that, oh, you know, superheroes become what they have in their brain, that's from a what if that really, it doesn't work very well. Mm -hmm. That's where one where, like, um, uh, Johnny Storm became a cyborg because he liked mechanics, and Reed Richards just became a giant brain. And Ben Grimm became Dragonfly because he always wanted to fly. And <laughs> Sue Storm became the stretchy woman because she always had to form herself into whatever shape people needed her to be. And it works. And then it works when you go back with the original versions. But then it's like, okay, I like that, but I don't like the way it was executed. I don't like the way they're executing the ideas in this. Yeah. And again, I think the reliance on body hoarder definitely doesn't help. I mean, it I mean, doesn't help. <laughs> I mean, I guess Black Panther tries to talk Hulk down at the end because he says, you know, last time was regrettable, but we can't allow your chaos to go unchecked. See reason. And that's when mm -hmm. Harpy shows up. Yeah. But even then, he's saying there's so many of us and there's only one of you, as if yeah. that was ever, as if that's ever the way to talk down the Hulk. I know. I, I mean, how when John Byrne was writing the book, how many Avengers did he take down? <laughs> Two teams of he Avengers? He took down all of them! Hercules and Wonder Man are on this team. Yeah, West, East and West Coast Avengers. Yeah. I know. It's like, yeah. And that was even the weaker Hulk. That was even the Hulk who has a limit. And what's the problem, Nick? No. <laughs> so it's like, yeah, it's, it, it's, it's ridiculous that the Avengers would act this stupid. And it's it's intentional stupidity in a book. I I like yeah, I mean, Captain America and Black Panther are probably the 
two of the greatest strategists in the Marvel Universe are just like, yeah, let's hit them some more. I'm just saying it's uh, no 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 zero point Batman. Um, oh, <laughs> doesn't have that intellectual level, and that is that is where Immortal Hulk is is at right now. And yeah. you know, I got sour on Immortal Hulk before. It's like, and I'm realizing, oh, he is like three good issues and then six bad. Oh, I don't know yeah, if I that okay, many, I yeah, see what he's doing. Yeah, now. there are there are there are dips and yeah. Yeah. It's definitely up and down, oh, you yeah. know. It's, it's a roller coaster. Has some good ideas and then he has a lot of bad ideas. Well, I guess um yeah, there's only like I guess his end run ends, ends at 50, so he's got like four more issues. Did you see I guess uh for the free comic book day uh issue, I guess there's going to be a Hulk story in there. And I guess they said uh Chip Zdarsky, who's writing Daredevil is going to be writing the Hulk story, so everyone's speculating now is like, "Oh, is Chip going to be the next uh, Hulk writer?" Well, that would be great. Chip's a good writer. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. That's a, I mean, you know, I love what Chip has done. You yeah. know, I, I I think he's a guy who understands how comic books work and how comic book character stories should go. Oh yeah, so. I, I love his work too. So that's a but everyone's speculating because he's writing the Hulk story in the free comic book day yeah. issue. I remember, like, I I really started to sell on on uh, Pack when he was writing. Um, Hulk too. Mm-hmm. It's like I think everyone is like you know I think Hulk is a is a hard book to write for a long time. Long term, yeah. I mean, uh, there's only a few people that ever done it, like Peter David. Uh, yeah, you've got to you you've got to be really willing to. And even Peter David switched it up. I mean, he did Gray Hulk, he did Joe for a while, and then he went to Professor Hulk and did that. Well, you know, and and what he did was he understood that he understood levels of Hulk. Yes, and then he built his levels of Hulk, and then he yes. just told different Hulk stories yeah. as he wanted to go. It's like, okay, you know, because you can't tell one Hulk. No. And you can't do a grand unified theory of the Hulk and have it be an ongoing because the Hulk is by his nature a disjointed character. Yes. He has to be he has to be Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. He has to be both Banner and the Hulk. And you can make as many Hulks as you want. Hey, here's a fun idea. How come there aren't more Banners? Ooh. And for what it's worth, Little Joe, that was like a great opportunity to say, oh, I'm Joe Banner. I'm one of the other Banners. I'm David Banner. I'm, there's like, yeah, oh, you think the Hulks are complex? No. This goes all the way down. And there's a dozen Banners who come out as needed. You ever, you know, that's why you sometimes get kind of in shape. Yeah. Comfortable, relaxed banner, and then sometimes you get total nerd, big, thick glasses, skinny banner because there's different banners for every occasion. I mean, I think they even did that during Peter David's run. It's like la- later on, mm-hmm. like towards the end of the Gray Hulk stuff. Like I think Betty even mentioned, she was, "Why do you look different?" I mean, it might have just been a different artist, but you know, it was, I think it was yeah. more along the lines of like, "Oh, hey, Banner and the Hulks are coming together." So you know, he's looking less yeah, well, bestial you know, and more like nothing. Arnold Schwartz in it. Yeah. Peter David may not respect my thoughts, but I still respect his. Um, <laughs> you know, um, yeah. That, but that's that, that's yeah. just the uh, that's just the truth of it. I, I really think that um, you know, I think that you could do a lot more with exploring all the different banners, and maybe that's that's like the missing piece that would really make the banner stories much more interesting. Mm-hmm. If you really just started to look at it from that way, because you know the idea of oh they took the banner away from the Hulk, but he's still this person. It's like you're you're. And granted, we're talking magic, magic stuff. But what does that even mean? Yeah. So if you had to say, what does that mean to say they took the banner out of the Hulk, and the Hulk's still there, and the banner's still there, you're kind of opening up this. Oh, you're creating this very big open space of what are we really talking about well yeah i mean i was thinking about that the other day too yeah that story where they separated hulk and banner and it's like like you say you know they're basically the same person so basically all they're doing is ripping them them person in half so they each each entity only had half the their supposed molecules so of course they had to recombine them yeah okay i want to give a quick shout out to war the bounty hunters star wars uh Boba Fett Black Armor Edition cover. Um, this is, yeah, this is the War of the Bounty Hunters. This is basically 
a funny thing happened on the way to Jabba's palace. And the idea is that after uh, Boba Fett has Han Solo, he's got to go down to this. He realized that all of a sudden that the, the carbonite isn't holding. It starts to melt. Oh, jeez. And he's like, oh, man. Well, you know, not for nothing. Those Imperials, they didn't know what they were doing. It was a shoddy, thrown-together carbonite thing. And I think he would have been so much happier. He's like, just let me take him. I got a cell. I'll put him in a cell. Um, they know we must treat him in carbonite. He's been dating my daughter. I don't like it. Um, <laughs> and, you know, so he has to take him to a doctor, and he's... Uh, He's one of this, he, he's a pretty cool species, um, the same species as the Denner owner on Coruscant, and he's basically a doctor in this, and he uh, says, yeah, I can I can fix it, but it's going to cost you. He's like, man, I, you know, I don't got the cash, but you know I'm good for it. He's like, dude, I know you, and you know that I know you, so you know that's why I need to be paid up front. But they work out this, it was like, look, I want you to kill this person and if you kill her in the arena, then it's perfectly straight and legal, and it's all cool. And uh, you do that for me, I'll do this for you. Hmm. Um, so he goes ahead, he does it, he fights, you know, they do the black armor, because he, like, paints his armor black. He t- c- tells him to call him Django. Um, <laughs> and he just goes and fights in the arena, kills a bunch of kills a bunch of beings, you know, as you do. Until he gets to the boss battle, where they, of course, have restructured the stadium to be at her advantage, because she's a spider being, and so they made it all webs. But that doesn't stop him. He just still basically kills her. Um, uh, when he goes to leave, they basically say, hey, you know, you collect your money, you know, or he says, you can't collect your money, you gotta work for us now, and he says, nah, just keep the money. Because he wasn't really there for the money. He just wanted to get the freaking carbonite fixed. Mm -hmm. But while that is all going on, basically, a bunch of other bounty hunters come and kill the doctor and steal uh, steal, uh, Han Solo. So now Boba Fett's got to go, dang it. Now he's got to go get his Han Solo back. And to me, this is just such a great setup for what I think is going to be such a fun romp through the Star Wars universe with just Boa Fett really just crushing every bounty hunter around him. This is where we're going to find out, oh, bounty, Boba Fett was actually cool. He wasn't just a guy who fell into a Sarlacc pit. Awesome. <clears throat> Maybe that we're going to see, like, he was, just, he was just so exhausted by the time he got there. He was like, what, i got to go to the party barge? I am in no mood to go to the party barge. Okay, I'll go to the party barge, and that's when everything goes nuts. All right. You know? <laughs> All right, you're killing me. Let's get to the main event. Well, which, because I got two, but yeah. Oh, uh, well, I know the big one I'll you, talk about. Because oh, I got yeah. the Marvels. Oh, yeah, I didn't read that. Marvels is cool. Basically, you know how they did that whole completely restructured timeline? Yeah. And there's this Sing Kong world that is like all of the Southeast Asian battles that ever happened in all of history, but now it's in the oh, yeah, yeah. Marvel Universe. Yeah, so it takes place there. We get young Reed Richards and young Ben Grimm in the 19-somethings at some point. 17 years ago, whenever it was, I guess that was 2003 by this point, which you know doesn't fit with the fact that the last time was clearly in the 1950s, but okay. Mm-hmm. And storyline, storyline, storyline. Um, we're jumping all around. It's going to be fun. Uh, this is the thing that really struck me as super interesting. We got this. We got these like we have these new characters: Warbird, Threadneedle, and some other dude. Um, they're going to be important. But next issue, uh, where's the? Oh, there we go. The next issue. Next issue. The thing. The Human Torch. The Punisher. The Black Cat. Melinda May oh. and more. So, yeah, I enjoy the Marvels. If you like like some weird historical, old school Marvel character reconcepts, this is fun. So, highly recommend it. Um, it's a good story. Now, okay, I guess we get to the big one. Heroes Reborn. Heroes Reborn. Number one. Numero uno, my friend. Colson's president, so that's good. 
Uh, Thanos has his Infinity Rings, so that's a thing. So it's like, uh, so it's like the only person who seems to remember the old world is Blade. At the moment, yeah. I wonder if that is that because he's half vampire because whatever's altered the world has gotten rid of the vampires. Well, exactly. So, so basically, he's a creature that shouldn't exist. Exactly. And we can assume this is somehow Mephisto related. Colson is president. Um, American democracy has conquered the world, or at least good parts of it. And uh, Doctor Doom has stolen the um, Juggernaut gem. Citarac, yes. The Citarac gem. And actually, what I like about this is that uh, Hyperion can't quite disrupt it. He actually, you know, Doom's got the upper hand on that one. Well, um, I mean, if this is your Superman pastiche, Superman is vulnerable to magic. One can argue that, yeah. Um, we've got that, obviously, you know, and that I love that, you know, they've got our merch villains here. We've got the Venom Skull, the Black Skull, as our uh, Nighthawk uh, villain's arch foe. I do like our Nighthawk here. and Oh, yeah, they went so Batman with this, yeah. Very well, Batman. of course, I mean, yeah. that's who he is, Phil. Oh, yeah, but I mean, even more than usual, it seemed like, yeah. Yeah, um, I I also like our Tony Stark in this. Just, just Tony Stark who just wants to sell people bombs. Uh, Doc Spectrum is good in this too. That's that's always great. Um, our Green Lantern pastiche, and we've got our Blur versus the Silver Witch. Yeah, because I guess uh, Pietro. Uh, oh yeah, the, her and Pietro never reformed. Well, he was killed. Her kids and so she to absorb his power. Yeah. Exactly, which is, I mean, it's such a great setup on every level. Everything about this, um, everything is changed just enough, but also has just enough stuff to keep it interesting. Mm-hmm. You know, um, we do go back to Drunken Thor, which is a storyline they did in the Ultimates, if you recall. Yep. They kind of draw him a lot, like oh, that's got some life field vibes there, right there, <laughs> the way they draw Thor. So, which again, also a heroes are born thing. Um, I'm sorry, I'm confusing um, Ultimates with uh, the original Heroes Are Born, but yeah, yeah, yeah. The idea is very interesting. There, we also get the fact that so apparently in this universe, Blade and Nighthawk know each other. Um, well, I think is that, like, isn't that the point Blade says? He's like, wait, you remember me. Yeah. And that's the thing. You know what's going to happen. And then we get to the big reveal at the end. Um, after, well, we get two big reveals. One is, and they, I love it, but let's face it, they did it once before in Marvel Apes, where the guy remembers where the real Steve Rogers is to bring him back. Uh, and that's what Blade does. He goes, finds Steve Rogers, but then Thor finds his hammer. Yep. Oh, brilliant, brilliant. <clears throat> I am not disappointed by this book in any conceivable way. I love it. I love Squadron Supreme to start with as mm-hmm. these great pastiche characters that they have really fleshed out. Honestly, I just think Marvel should just do a Squatch and Supreme film. Are they still L- are they still LMDs though? Because as I showed you, I got the trading cards mm-hmm. and everyone else, like the regular characters, Thor, Captain America, Blade, they all have like their original appearances, like Journey in the Mystery eighty three and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Every member of the Squadron Supreme, it says first appearance, Avengers ten from November twenty eighth, twenty eighteen or twenty nineteen. But yeah, you know, when they revealed them to be LMDs and that, you know, that storyline, that's, that's saying that's yeah. the first appearance for all the squadrons, so. Well, you know, and again, this goes into this weird thing, I think, that, you know, for what it's worth, um, Feige may be hemming and hawing about what he's going to include from the DC, from the Marvel yeah. television universe. I think the Marvel comic writers have just embraced it. They're like, oh my gosh, what if LMDs were from the Darkhold? What if that was the whole idea? And that, like, oh, that's brilliant. And so the idea of Darkhold created LMDs that have superpowers, chef's kiss from a, from a comic book writer's perspective. And so, you know, maybe, maybe that's where they're going with it. 
And we've seen LMD Squadron Supreme characters before, but that were at the full power level? That's a new thing. But then again, we've seen the scrolls do that where they reproduce powers. You know, we've seen we've seen this happen before, and so and again, maybe it, it's happening again. If it's supernatural, I mean, who knows what Mephisto can do? Mm-hmm. Or exactly, and maybe it's Mephisto and Chithon working together for once. There you go. You know, not for nothing, Mephisto needs allies. Dude lost his job. Oh, he's willing to kiss some butt. Remember in Infinity Gauntlet? Man, he was all up on Thanos. So he's like, "Oh yes, sir. Yes, don't don't snap me out of oh, existence." Yeah. Well, exactly, because for what it's worth, he needs death, but he also needs life. Mm-hmm. That's the real sticky wicket of it for a guy like Mephisto. He needs to be playing both sides of the street. Oh, yeah. Because he only has value if there's death, but he also only has value if there's life. If everybody's dead, then, okay, we're done, you know? And it's just, it's just I guess I'll spin my wheel for eternity. You know, that's no fun. Um... It's like with that whole like non-universe that Korvac wants to make. Yeah. We're all just crystal cows. That doesn't sound fun. No. Anyway. Oh, Philip, a lot of good books, a lot of good things. Everything we've enjoyed. Uh, anything you want to say before we call it a night? No, I think that's it. I'm sorry, what did you say, Philip? I said I think that's it. What are the kind of headphones oh, are you listening to this? Oh, goodness. On? You know, I don't always have the best headphones. Because I should probably go to tweakedaudio.com, get some tweaked audio headphones using the coupon code Southgate at checkout to get a great savings on fanta- fantastic headphones. Likewise, after that, I can use that same coupon code Southgate upon checkout and just get myself uh, the Hunter Killer package uh, from HunterKiller.com. Help Michelle Gray solve a cold case. It's like being in your own serial killer podcast. Mm-hmm. Uh, <laughs> And get a great uh, discount. Uh, likewise, another thing I should do, I really need to, is uh, go read Pod Life the Book, which is available over on Amazon in both paperback and digital download. And the best way to get there is to go to our show notes, click on the link. will cost you nothing, but actually helps the show out when you do that. And if anyone does any of that, Philip, and they want to reach out to you and talk to you about it, how can they do that? Uh, then get a hold of me and anyone else on the team at uh, capesandlunatics at gmail.com or call the voicemail 614-382-2737. That's 614-38-CAPES. Or find links to everything we do, social media, Patreon, YouTube, everything. Uh, Linktree, L-A-N-K-T-R dot E-E slash capesandlunatics. And of course, you can always write to me in that old fashioned email way that we're a miles and positive one suited at superconnectivity blog at gmail.com. That's superconnectivity blog on one word at gmail.com. And of course, follow me on the Twitter as I live tweet uh, anything I feel like, but maybe Legends of Tomorrow, Sunday nights at Charlie Esser. That's C H A R L I E E S S E R. Look for the two E's in the middle. For what? For quality. Bing! Bing! Thank you, Moss. All right, ladies and gentlemen, you have listened to another wonderful episode of Super Connectivity. Ran a little long, as we have been doing lately, but there's so much to cover. Uh, thank you for connecting with us. Please super connect with us again next week. Good night. Good night. Not going to get too long. Yeah, I like that. I, you know, I, dream, I always dream of that day when we would just do that half hour <laughs> fun, <laughs> compact podcast. People, we sent me a list like so long and he's like yeah we'll do that in a half hour i like sent you like two things and well, we did today. one of them over on the other this show week. yeah this week yeah i know well you know it just because i never know what you're gonna do on the other show and that's my thing and then we have to do comics there and then we have to do comics here and there's so many comics though